the Russian nuclear fleet and the international efforts aimed at solving those problems. The nuclear fleet of the former Soviet Union greatly outnumbered fleets of other European countries and the USA. Five nuclear-powered cruisers, about 250 nuclear-powered submarines, one container ship and seven nuclear-powered icebreakers were built in Russia from 1955 to 2000. The fleet is gradually getting old and creates a danger of radioactive accidents and environmental disasters. More than 180 nuclear-powered ships are now out of operation, but there is still lack of resources and experience in their timely and safe dismantlement. Decommissioning of nuclear service ships is even more complicated matter. Now Russia owns more than 90 nuclear service ships and barges, which transport and store spent nuclear fuel, liquid and solid radioactive waste. No country in the world need such a numerous nuclear service ship fleet. Nuclear-powered ships in other countries are served at specialized bases. The situation is different in Russia. The fact that there are such a great number and variety of Russian nuclear service ships tells us about numerous bases and sites of infrastructure for nuclear-powered vessels in the region and the lack of roads and railways in the areas where nuclear-powered vessels are the stationed and repaired. These service ships are the only means of transport which connect these remote areas with the so-called big land. Seventy operative and retired service ships and barges are in the northwest Russia. More than 50 of them pose a danger to the environment and will be decommissioned. Experts consider that one of the main sources of nuclear and radiation danger is Lepsis ship, which is moved two kilometers away from Murmansk. The ship was laid down at Nikolaev shipyard in 1934. It was named in honor of a worker Ivan Lepsi, who participated in three Russian revolutions. Building of the ship continued till the beginning of the Second World War. During the war, the ship was dumped in the river of Hopper in Ukraine. Construction of nuclear-powered icebreaker Lenin prompted the second period of Lepsi operation in the end of 1950s. This icebreaker required creation of a service base to refuel its reactors. The dry cargo ship Lepsi was recalled due to its durable hull. Admiralty shipyard in Leningrad re-equipped Lepsi for the new purposes in 1961. Murman Shipping Company operated this ship since 1962. The ship's main duties were to serve nuclear-powered icebreakers and refuel their reactors. Lepsi reloaded nuclear fuel and nuclear-powered icebreakers Lenin, Arctica and Sibiri 14 times from 1963 to 1981. The ship was eventually reconstructed to become a storage of old equipment, various useless parts of machinery, radioactive waste and spare nuclear fuel in 1981. Lepsi started to glow in three years after the fuel was put into it. At those times, Lepsi participated in radioactive waste dumping in the Barents and Kara Seas, a common practice for that period. The ship went to its last run and met with a great storm in the Kara Sea in 1984. Radioactive water splashed out into the storage and contaminated it so heavily that complete deactivation was impossible. The radiation level of all the Lepsi facilities, which were increased by that accident, complicates the process of the ship's decommissioning. Lepsi has been moved in the outskirts of Murmansk for more than 15 years and presents more potential nuclear threat with each passing year. What can happen with Lepsi if it either capsizes because of a violent storm or if a ship collides with it or an aircraft collides with it, then you have the risk that there is a chain reaction starting in the spent nuclear fuel which is inside Lepsi. And this spent nuclear fuel that is in Lepsi make it unique because we have radioactivity there, more radioactivity there than was released during the Chernobyl accident. A 
crew of 18 people have been maintaining LAPSA and providing nuclear and radiation safety since the ship was moored at its current location. At the moment, the technical condition of the ship is satisfactory. The wearing out of the ship's hull is 30 percent and higher in some places. In order to normalize the radiation situation on the ship, all its facilities have been deactivated. The ship has protection barriers inside tanks for storage of spent nuclear fuel, repaired and loading fuel systems, and modern dosimeter equipment. Liquid radioactive waste was removed from the ship. All the systems responsible for nuclear and radiation safety are operational, which is officially documented by the state control. Gamma rays decreased five times, and radioactively contaminated surface decreased 50 to 1,000 times as a result of those operations. Spent nuclear fuel storage and containers with solid radioactive waste still remain the main sources of nuclear and radiation danger of the ship. Spent nuclear fuel storage consists of two tanks and is located between the two decks under the lid you are watching at. The tanks are situated in a special facility. Its walls are made of various kinds of steel. The walls are 40-45 cm thick. Each tank contains 366 cases. The cases now store 621 assemblies. 208 assemblies are 36 years old. Others are more than 20. Special concrete fills the space between the tanks in order to make an extra protection barrier. The tanks are cooled by 24 tons of fresh water. The tape is not defected. The ripple illustrates radiation. Shootings inside the cases were done by special camera. There are four caissons, special casks for damaged assemblies near each tank. Each caisson contains 18 defective assemblies. Assemblies are stored in caissons because they changed their shape and swelled as a result of operations in nuclear reactor and cannot be put into standard cases. It is impossible to unload these assemblies in a regular way. LAPSI also contains tanks with technological water and 30 containers with solid low radioactive waste. All these storage tanks and containers emit radiation. The radiation dose above the plate of the closed storage is 50 to 200 millirangan per hour and up to 1,500 millirangan per hour in the area of electric engines of the rotary mechanism. The radiation dose of the hull coverage opposite the storage is 400 to 600 millirangan per hour. In general, gamma radiation on board LEPSA exceeds the level designed by the existing regulations. The ship is located at the most remote pier since the radiation level on the territory of the base should not exceed 100 millirangan per hour. Dosimeter shows 8 to 9 millirangan per hour in 30 meters from the ship. It is one and a half times slower than in the center of Murmansk. Well-known Norwegian environmental organization Bilona offered to build an onshore living complex in order to help Murma shipping company to keep LEPSI crew from increased doses of radiation. For Bilona, the LEPSI project is very, very important. Uh, it's a project where we have got openness on all the technical information. It's a dangerous situation to have close to a city with 500,000 people and we need to deal with it in a way that not is contaminating too many workers. Bologna has, uh, since 1994, uh, worked to get international funding, got uh, the right technology that could stay in the region uh, and solve also other problems. And uh, we have had a special focus on the people that is really heroes safeguarding the ship. Uh, therefore, we have built the Lepsa village, uh, which uh, should make better working conditions for the people working. Uh, and uh, in the future, we hope now that the problems of liability and tax exemption is solved. And uh, we look forward to go, go on the work to clean up and secure this very dangerous waste and find a good way of final disposal for this, this uh, very dangerous nuclear fuel. In the beginning of May, Frederick Hauge, president of Beluna Foundation, gave a symbolic key from Lepsa village to Stanislav Golovinsky, director of nuclear icebreaker fleet, 
and to Vasily Krasovsky, captain of the ship. Lepsa village is a small part of a grand project of the ship remediation. It started 17 years ago, when Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and Council of Ministers of the USSR signed a special resolution in September 10, 1986. The geometry of fuel assemblies was damaged during the unloading of fuel from Lenin Icebreaker to Lepp's ship in 1960 and in 1970. Fuel loading into the storage tanks demanded physical efforts and some assemblies were simply hammered into the storage cells. The idea to decommission the ship appeared in 1980s. The first task before decommission is to unload spent nuclear fuel from the ship. It is a very complicated problem. There is agencies discussed the necessity of the ship decommissioning more than 12 times before 1992. But neither financing nor actual decommissioning work were carried out. Scientific Research Institute and Minatum Bureau of Constructions started to work out the project of Lepsi decommissioning in 1992. That work halted again in 1994. Later efforts of Murman Shipping Company and Bellona Foundation led to Lepsi project inclusion in the plan of Euro-Arctic Barents region activities for 1994-1995. Active joint actions of the Murman Shipping Company and Bellona drew attention of the European Commission to the problems of the ship. French SNG and English AEA technology won a tender for implementation of spent nuclear fuel unloading from Lepsi in the frame of TASIS program. The companies examined Lepsi storages and worked out a method to manage the damaged fuel, but did not consider technical problems of unloading fuel from caissons and complex decommissioning of the ship. Two principal positions then were built by all. Разрабатываем проект. Проект должен учитывать максимально российские технологии. There were two principal points which suited all the parties. First of all, the decommissioning project was to be connected with the spent nuclear fuel management cycle, which existed in Russia. Secondly, Russian experience could reduce the project expenses. It was said that the transferred technology could be later used on the similar objects of the Russian Navy. Norway, France, the Great Britain and Nordic Environmental Finance Corporation or NEFCO participated in the work of the steering committee of the International Environmental Project LEPSE, established in 1995. The project has not been launched for a long time because of the unresolved problem of nuclear liability between Russia and donor countries. Participants of the committee meeting in France in October 1996 decided that each party should make its own contribution to the project. Foreign participants were to finance equipment and robotics manufacturing and technologies. The Murman shipping company were to unload the ship. Russian government was responsible for the fuel transportation to the Mayakro processing plant and its safety storage there. Minatum and Murmansk Regional Committee of Environment understood the importance of the project and insisted on complex Lepsi project implementation consisted of fuel unloading and the ship decommissioning. That was beyond the Murman Shipping Company liability frames. Western partners refused to start the project funding if Russia would not assume the juridical responsibility of possible risks or mistakes of the ship decommissioning. Russia signed the necessary document with France in 2000 and an agreement of cooperation in nuclear environmental issues between Russia and NEVCO in 2002, where parties outlined the LEPSA project. Recently, NEVCO announced 13 million euros grant allocation for the unloading of the fuel from the ship. Russia, France, Netherlands, the European Commission will finance the project. Norway will allot the largest amount of money. Russia doesn't have 30 million dollars needed to implement the project of Lepsi decommission and nobody is sure that Western financing will meet all the expenses. French SGN company says that the biggest part of finances for the first phase of the project will be spent on the paperwork, which will be done by that company. For example, preparation of documents for project licensing, design documentation and preliminary report with analysis of safety will cost it about 1.1 million euros but unloading the fuel operation by employees of the Murman shipping company will cost 200,000 euros only. Taking into account different approaches to mathematics and methods of money spending, Murman shipping company suggested existing in technology implementation taxed in the Russian Far East.
Despite the high cost, Russian variant of the ship decommissioning means participation of skilled French partners who are to deliver robotics and make technical and ecological substantiation of the project. Employees of the Murman Shipping Company who work on the service ships and nuclear-powered icebreakers will implement all the technical work. The Russian side will of course be uh, responsible for the workers, the specialists, because they know how they should take out, they know how the spent fuel is inside the Lepsa, and they will be the main responsible here to get to make sure that the fuel can be taken out with the French equipment. First of all, the workers will unload all the fuel and water, cut all constructions and clean the deck equipment, and then transfer their radioactive waste to the onshore or to other ships. Then they will start unloading the damaged fuel, as it is the most complicated operation. A special machine will cut off the curved tips of defective assemblies. Then workers will cut out cases with the assemblies and dry them in a special facility in order to put it into a special container. Then the containers will be loaded into railway cars and transported to the Mayak reprocessing plant. Then the workers will cut the ship into large blocks, put them in concrete and transport the blocks to the storage. They plan to implement all the operations within five years. Other nuclear service ships with fewer problems than Lepsi are the next to be decommissioned. N nobody knows what to do with uranium zirconium cladding fuel, which cannot be reprocessed. It is stored on service ship Lotte. Nowadays, Lotte and Dimandry service ships store 14 reactor cores uranium zirconium fuel, which contain more than 3,000 assemblies. These two ships can store 22 reactor cores as maximum. Low temp of spent nuclear fuel unloading from nuclear power ice breakers and submarines, three year period of its storage on board service ships before it can be transported to Mayak, can lead to a critical situation with the accumulation of spent nuclear fuel on these ships. But this is another story, and we hope it will take less time than the still unfinished Lepsi project. It is a shame if Lepsi will anyway exist as a ship which scares Europe.